Today we're going to be upcycling a couple pieces. I should probably just call this a redemption upcycle because I've already filmed a video on both of these pieces, but I wasn't happy with how they turned out. So here we are again, but this time we're gonna make them even better. So hello and welcome, my name is Bianca and this is a place to inspire and to be inspired. I love all things crafting and creating on a budget. In one of my previous alterations video that I did, I showed this black gingham top that I had thrifted a while back. My goal was just to make it more wearable and more flattering because it was super boxy and it was just giving business casual, which isn't my style at all. And I asked you guys for some suggestions on how I could make it better and you guys delivered. And I got really inspired by some of your suggestions. So we're going to be gutting the entire top and making a whole new top out of the fabric. And for a second project today, I'm gonna to be adding ruffles to this pair of shorts that I also thrifted. My original goal was to turn them into something like this. So previously when I tried to do this upcycle, I thrifted a bodysuit that had ruffles across the top and I cut off those ruffles and then I attached it to the shorts. But the problem was that the ruffles only covered the bottom of the shorts, so I was very limited to what I could wear with this ruffle mini skirt. So I was only able to wear long oversized sweaters or long oversized t-shirts with it because I was terrified and also embarrassed that someone would actually see my janky DIY job. So today we're gonna go to the craft store and get some white fabric so that I can make another layer of the ruffles to make it look more completed. And I'm also gonna redo the first layer of ruffles that I did because I think that those could be adjusted as well. So before we can get started on this project, we need to go to the craft store and get some supplies. So here's our top. I ended up getting an invisible zipper. This one is 12 to 14 inches, and then I got some white lace. I don't know if I'm gonna be using the zipper or not, but I just figured just in case I decided to make it more fitted and I wasn't able to get it over my head, I could add the zipper. I think with my plan, I won't need to use this, but we will see. This is how the top is looking. It has this collared neckline. And for this top, I'm pulling inspiration from a few different photos that I saw. These are the ones that I'm really liking. And I think what I'm actually gonna end up doing for this I think I'm gonna make the bottom the top and my plan is to kind of make it a strapless and then add elastic here and then add another band of elastic under the bust and then I'll be able to cut it to about here and then I'll have the fabric from here down that I can work with and I think I'm gonna use this fabric to make some little tie straps and then I want to add the lace maybe at the top band here. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing yet but I think we need to just start chopping her up and then learn as we go. So I'm gonna start by adding this elastic to the bottom here. When I start to sew it, I'm going to stretch, stretch this, but not the fabric. That way, once you release it, it kind of scrunches. And then this part here will fit tight above our bust. And I'm gonna start attaching this at one of the sides. We can cut off this extra. So now this is how the top is looking and I'll try it on so I can show you guys and then actually and I think I'm just gonna cut this now so that I can work with it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna cut it across from armpit to armpit. Now I'm just gonna try to put this on over my top so that I can see where I need to add the second line of elastic. I think for the elastic under the bust, we'll need to do it about here. So I'm gonna turn this inside out so that I can mark it with my marker. And from the top here, I'm going to just mark seven inches. And I'm gonna go all the way across measuring seven inches so that I can make sure that it's even around the whole thing. And for this project, I'm using a marker instead of fabric chalk because the white fabric chalk that I have doesn't really show up on this fabric. Also, I currently have a cold, so if I sound sick during all of these voiceover parts, that is why. Okay. So now I'm gonna try it on again and then we'll see where we're at and then we'll start hemming the bottom, I think. Okay, here's how we're looking so far. This was the collared neckline that I cut off and I was wondering, would it maybe be cute if I added like a ruffle at the top? I don't know, that's an option, but I also want to, I wanna open this lace trim and then decide if maybe I wanna use this at the top or the bottom or both. Would that be cute? 
I feel like that could be cute or if I had it like peeking out of the top here maybe I don't know I decided I want to seam rip the second elastic underneath the bust I just don't think I like the way that it's fitting so we're going to keep the elastic at the top and then we're going to reevaluate our options I have a new plan now. I was thinking of adding another band of elastic under the bust, but I tried it and then seam ripped because I did not like how it looked. So now I think I'm gonna take one of the suggestions from my previous video and I'm going to sure shear the fabric. Shearing, shearing. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to pronounce it, but it's gonna look something like this. And to accomplish this, all you need is elastic thread. So I think it should be pretty easy. And I think I wanna do this technique all the way down so that the whole thing is more form fitted. And then maybe I'll do like some ruffles at the very bottom. And when you start wrapping the elastic by hand, you want to make sure to use minimal tension for this part. And when you're done, it should look something like this. And we do this part the same way that we normally would. So I'm going to put it in going this direction. And now we're just going to pick up our bobbin thread. And I'm going to start at one of the sides again. So we'll start at this side. And I'm just going to pull this elastic at the top taut. And instead of drawing out straight lines on the fabric, I'm just going to use the edge of my foot along this seam here as my guide. Now that I'm back where I started to make this next part easier, I'm just going to make sure that my needle's in the fabric and I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to sew down about a quarter inch. And then come back this way. And then put my foot back down. Now I can just continue on with my next row. Okay, this part's gonna take forever, so I'm going to watch Gossip Girl while I do this. Privacy when their well-being is at stake. And here's how we're looking so far. We're about halfway done. I feel like I've been doing this forever, but we are making progress. Hey, Harry. No, 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 it's not what you think. It's just... We're finally finished doing the shearing, shearing. And I think this is already so much better just having it more form fitting. And now I'm trying to decide what I wanna do with the straps. And if I wanna add this at the bottom or maybe like a little bit at the top. I think if I go in by eyelet trim for the straps, I could also use that at the bottom. And I feel like that would look better than this lace that I got. I could always use this for another project, but I think we're gonna go back to the craft store and get some eyelet trim. Okay, so I got our trim and we have a couple options. I definitely want to add the trim to the bottom like this. I think this would look really good. And then I was thinking for the straps, I could do this for the straps and do this on each side. Or I can use the scraps that I have from this fabric and do a couple of thin straps in this fabric if I have enough. I think this would be cute, but is it too much of like the same? I don't even know if I have enough of this fabric to make two straps, so this might be my only option. So I use these little clips here to mark where I want to put the straps, and then I put two in the back as well. But first I'm going to attach this trim to the bottom here, and then we'll start working on the straps. Okay, I do think I like it with these straps. They're not perfect, but they do, they work. If I decide I hate them later on, I can always just change them out for these but I think this looks so cute. It's so much more flattering than the original. Okay, so I ended up cutting off these straps to just go with these ones instead because I do feel like it ties it in more having these match the trim at the bottom. 
but I think this turned out really cute. And now I'm really happy with how this one turned out, so now we can move on to the skirt. So this is the skirt after my first attempt at altering it with the ruffle attached from the bodysuit that I thrifted. And then my plan is to take this white fabric that I got and then to try to make another layer of ruffles that will look something like this. That way it'll kind of cover all of the inconsistencies and just make it look more completed. And more seam ripping means watching more Gossip Girl to pass the time. I usually watch true crime podcasts, so this is not my normal genre. Okay, we detached the ruffles and now I'm going to reattach them the right way. So I'm not going to show myself reattaching that ruffle layer because I already showed originally how I attached it in my first video. But for this piece of fabric, I'm going to be doing a rolled hem across the entire bottom. And this just means that we're going to be folding it under twice as thinly as possible to cover that raw edge. Okay, so now I've gone through and I've hemmed the bottom here along the whole thing. So now I need to figure out how much to cut. I think I want this ruffle to lay about here. But then I also want a little extra room here so that I can fold it under. So we're going to cut about 10 inches across this whole piece here and then we'll start attaching it. And I am counting down the days until I accidentally cut my comforter doing this. And I'm going to fold it under the waistband. So from the outside it'll look something like this. And now I'm just going to pull the waistband as far as I can and make sure that these are lined up and then fold it under. watching me attach this and you were thinking to yourself, this is not going to work. You were right. It did not work. It did not turn out the way that I wanted at all. Even though I was pulling the elastic while I was attaching this, the elastic just didn't bounce back the same as it did before. So I think what I'm going to have to do is detach this ruffle layer and I'm going to use this elastic instead, which is the same elastic that I used for my boxer shorts project. I will show you guys. So this is the waistline of the boxer shorts that I made and I feel like this would just look so much better having like a thicker waistband. I don't think I'm going to be able to use the original elastic from these shorts, so I think I'm going to have to cut it just below the elastic. And then after I make this ruffle layer the way that I did the waistband here, I'll just have to reattach the shorts to it that way. And I think that will work out. So fingers crossed that in the next hour we can be done with this project and I will be able to show you guys the finished result. So now for the elastic waistband, we're going to take our waist measurement, whether you want it high-waisted or low-waisted, you're going to measure around, and then whatever that measurement is, you want to take away about five inches, that way it fits snug around your waist, wherever that is for you. And for me, it's right here. And now we're going to sew a pocket that this elastic can slide into. So we're going to fold this under like this, and then we're going to sew right along this line. So this little tool here is called a loop turner and it definitely makes projects like these a lot easier. So here's how it's looking after I wove the elastic through that opening. And after I sewed both ends of the elastic together, now I'm just going to be overlapping the fabric to connect those together. It would probably make more sense to attach your fabric before and then add in your elastic, but I wasn't sure how much fabric I would need to create the ruffled look that I was looking for, so I knew that I was probably going to be adding more fabric. So that's why I decided to attach the elastic before the fabric. Okay, so this is how we're looking. So I put the new ruffle layer with the new elastic on top of the shorts that I had already made. And at the very top here, that very top one inch of the elastic, that's the original elastic from the shorts. So now I'm just going to mark on the new ruffle elastic where the front and the sides are. That way I know where to attach them. And then I'm going to attach that new ruffle layer and then cut off the old elastic band when I'm done. And since I made them out of a pair of thrifted shorts, they do have the shorts underneath. So you don't have to worry about the length and then accidentally flashing anyone because there are shorts underneath. And since I added another row of ruffles at the top, I feel like it's just more wearable with like a smaller t-shirt if I wanted to, or I could still wear it with an oversized sweater. And now I feel like it's just more versatile and wearable. I don't have to worry about an oversized sweater or t-shirt pulling up and then seeing my bad DIY job. 
So now it can be worn either way with a long sweater or just a regular top. I feel like there's so many different ways that you could wear a ruffle mini skirt. And I feel like if you paired it with some Western boots, it would be a really good concert outfit. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other suggestions for what I should do next, please let me know in the comments. Until next week, bye!